Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again uh, for joining me this afternoon on this Promise LA page as we go through and uh, we we discover what God has to say in His Word. Amen. And uh, you know what I want to tell you as we get down towards the end of November before I share anything and before I forget, um, just want to just say what what a what a joy it's been for me this past year and. Uh, to come in week in and week out to share God's word with you. Uh, I really didn't uh, realize what a joy it really is and, and until right before I came on uh, on this broadcast just to just to say what a what a great joy it is to share week in and week out and uh, you know I, I, I pray that uh, some of these messages have been a blessing to you. I, I don't know that uh, every message was perfect or anything like that, but uh, I pray that you got something out of it. I pray that somehow whatever was said, whatever was done, it would lead you to Jesus because that's what it's all about. Amen. And, and today is no different. Uh, as we come into this part of the year, uh, this latter part of November, when we look at uh, celebrating uh, the, these holiday seasons. And um, I, I know that uh, th this time of the year, some people just like, oh my goodness. There he goes again, because I get to be a little kid again uh, during the Christmas season, and I like doing that, to be honest with you. Um, but coming into this uh, Thanksgiving holiday season, you know, you look at that word, Thanksgiving, and I understand that for many people, you look at it and you say, well, yeah, that's the start of the holiday season, that we're, you know, pretty soon we're going to see Christmas lights and, and Christmas trees and, and clearances at the stores and people... The radio stations are going to be playing Christmas music, and, and yes, that is true. It does happen. Um, but Thanksgiving, to take time to, to give thanks, you know, as, as a, here in, in America and, and maybe even some places throughout the world, I, I do know other people throughout the world follow suit um, and, and takes time to say thank you. I know that there's a lot of you out there that, that actually... Um, it, you feel a lot of things, but thankful isn't one of them, you know. Uh, maybe it's because you have, you've had some hardship this year, and, and quite honestly, who hasn't, right? Um, maybe you, you, you have some painful memories or, or, or painful tragedies uh, that have happened this time of the year or any other part of the year, and it's hard to, to stay thankful. Maybe it's a loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a loss of, of income. Maybe it's a loss of, of, of health. Uh, maybe it's just an utmost change. Maybe it's a, a financial situation you find yourself in. And uh, you, you, you say that, you know, I, I, I feel a lot of things during this time of the year, but thankful isn't one of them. Um, you know, this time of the year, if, if we're going to be real, if we're going to be honest, uh, it, it's not the happiest times. You know, I, I always like, I, I remember years ago preaching in a church and I got off into this little tangent. By, by singing that song, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But for so many, it's not. Amen? If we're going to be real. For many, it's a time of loneliness. For many, it's a time of depression. For many, it's a, it's a time of a little bit more uh, alcohol and drug use. And, and I want to pray for those of you who get into that, especially with the, the, the fentanyl uh, epidemic that's going around in, in our society today. Be very careful. And I'm praying that that none of you falls victim to that, especially you're at this time of the year when, when suicide is, you know, seems to be on the rise. And, and, you know, a lot of times, and when people fall into those things, the, the natural thing to do these days is to go, go see a therapist or, or, or a psychologist and, and get some help there. And they'll tell you the, to, to maintain an attitude of gratitude is, is that remember that you made it through another year. Remember that that you have a roof over your head, and you know things may not want to be, things may not be what you you think they ought to be, and um, but remember, you know you you live in in America. You could be be living, you could have been born in any other place in the world, and it could be a lot worse. And and while those things are true, and I know those things are helpful, those things can obviously be subjective sometimes. Amen. Uh, yeah, after all, you're not going to use that rationale on people who don't have a roof over their head. You're not going to use that rationale who, on, on people who don't live in America that are going through some, some, some hunger pains like my friends 
and uh, church family in Kenya that are seeing people die every day because of hunger. And so, so those things are very subjective. And those things aren't an answer to everything. But, you know, I'm so glad that we have an answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. Because there's some things here I want to share with you that, that really came out of a time of me coming through those faces, a, a time of loneliness, a time of depression, a, a, a time of, of not feeling that this is the most wonderful time of the year. It's a time where, where uh, you know, I felt trapped. And, and I remember calling out to God. And, and, and what really flooded my soul was the truth out of his word of what he shared with me and how he touched me. And, you know, I, I want to encourage you today that, that, you know, for the believer, for the believer, for the follower of Jesus Christ, you have every reason to be thankful. You have every reason to have an attitude of gratitude. And I know the circumstances and situations around you will tell you, will tell you that, that uh, you don't have a reason to be thankful. You don't have a reason to be grateful. But I want to tell you that none of the stuff around you uh, disqualifies the truth of God's word. Let, let, me, let me explain to you what I'm talking about. In, in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, the apostle writes this to the, Coloss the, the, the church in Colossae. He says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, right? If you're, if you're listening today and, and Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, then this message is for you. And if maybe you haven't received them as Lord and Savior, we're going to give you that opportunity a little bit later on today. But it says, for those of you who have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk in him. Walk in this truth. Walk in your relationship with him. Amen. Having firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. Or some says overflowing with thanksgiving you know that that word with thanksgiving i i know a lot of people will say well i don't want to be grateful you don't know what i'm going through pastor daniel you know preacher you, you don't know what's going on around me. how can i be thankful well let me tell you something when the apostle paul wrote this you know he wrote this to a church that was coming under under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of under persecution because they were teaching about Jesus Christ, about his deity, his deity, his divinity, maybe his, that he is indeed God in the flesh. You know, they were considered a, a, a heresy. They were, they were considered a, a blasphemous. And so they were coming under a lot of attacks from the, from the surrounding churches saying, you're not preaching right. You know, and it's not like today where, where if you know a church isn't preaching, right, you post it up on Facebook. This church was going through attacks. This church was was actually being being physically attacked, as well as well as being taken away from from business opportunity, job opportunities to feed their families. Uh, they were suffering hunger. They were such suffering social shame. But yet, in still of that, the Apostle Paul says. Let it, be, let it be that you would be overflowing with gratitude. Why? Because the, the truth of God's word, the truth that you are found in Christ, that he is your Lord and Savior, that he's forgiven you of your sins, that, he's, that he's, he's, he's etched out an eternity in heaven for you, should trump out any of these things that are in this world that is temporal and that, and that is superficial at the very least. Nothing ever can take away what God has already given to you. And that's the same truth of, of, of what God is telling us today. Look at this in, 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 in 1 Thessalonians in uh, 5, 16 and 18. The Apostle Paul says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will, or this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It says in everything give thanks. Really? In my hardship, give thanks? Yes. In my lack, give thanks? Yeah. In, in, in everything that's going wrong, in my, in my unfulfilled ambitions, and in, 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 in my depression, and in my anxieties, and, and in my loss, do I give thanks for that? 
Absolutely. Why? Because these things are only temporary. It's better for you to experience things knowing that they're temporary than to experience things and to the understanding that they would be permanent. And the truth of the matter is, without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these things that you could be going through now could be permanent. There would be no way out. You know, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that has sinned against God. We live in a world that has chosen to turn our backs on God. And this is the result that comes. God did not intend this for you and I. He did not intend for you to go through heartache and heartbreak. He did not intend for you to go through loss. He did not intend for you to go through depression and anxiety and, and, and drug use and loss. He did not intend that for you and I. But the good news is, because of Jesus Christ, that is only temporary. And I believe with all my heart, based out of the truth of God's word, that this is that we will the the ones the things that 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 we have lost the loved ones that we have lost we will see again as long as they're found in Christ the things that 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 uh, that cause us to 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 be depressed the things that cause us to be lonely God is able to redeem and God is able to restore because He wants good things for His children and for those of us who are found in Christ we are His children. And I know some of you would say, well, Pastor Daniel, aren't we all his children? No, that is a lie. We are his children because we become heirs to the promise found in Jesus Christ. We are all God's creation, but we are not all his children unless we are redeemed back through the blood of Jesus Christ. I hope you can understand that today. And because of that, we have every reason to be grateful. We have every reason to say, well, all the things that we're going through now, they're temporary. And they're not, they will not always be here. Case in point, Job. The, if, you, if you never heard uh, the character Job, Job lost everything. He wanted to die. He had friends, so-called friends, that were giving him bad counsel and making him feel even more miserable. Talk, talk about a Zantac moment. Amen? Job was, was, uh, Job was going through that. But when he finally came to the place where he humbled himself before God, God showed that what Job was going through was temporary by restoring everything that he had lost. And in Christ, God is able to restore everything ourselves. And one day, all that has been lost will, will finally be restored. Amen? And I say all that because I want to share three things that you can munch on during this that you can digest, you can chew on a little bit during this holiday season. Because here's what I want to tell you. When I was going through the, the same things myself, what I meditated on, what I, what I latched onto during times of loneliness, during times of, 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 of depression even, I latched on to God's word. I latched on to God's promise. And it changed my whole mindset. It changed my, my, my whole heart condition. And it's allowed me to live a life that is more abundantly, abundantly more than I ever thought or I ever imagined. So three things real quick that I want to share with you to develop an attitude of gratitude. Amen. And next, uh, next week we're going to talk about these three aspects. How do they look like when they operate in our lives? Okay. Let me give you three aspects today as part one. But I want to show you how they operate in our lives because, after all, what does knowing these aspects look like if they don't, if you don't know how they work? Amen. It's like giving you a toy on Christmas without giving you the batteries. So hang on to the, for today. Let me give you these three aspects that I want to share with you today that Lord Lord has laid upon my heart, and then join me next week as we show you how do they work in your life. We're going to give you the batteries. Amen. We're going to give you the batteries of not only the truck but for the remote control as well so join me right now as we talk about how do you develop an attitude of gratitude first of all remember the love of god the love of god jeremiah 31 verse 3 says this the lord appeared of old to me saying yes i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness i have drawn you amen now let me tell you this Sometimes we could say to ourselves, yeah, he appeared to Jeremiah. You call on him. 
call on God, yell out his name, you know, say, Jesus, help me. And you watch how God will come to you because I know it's in his character. I believe that that I have the authority to share that with you out of the out of the word of God, that if you would call out to him, he will come to you and he will tell you, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Amen. And, and, and that means from eternity past to eternity future, God has loved you and me without condition. God has loved you and me without condition. I know that's hard to believe sometimes because we live in a temporal love. We live in a superficial love. You know, we, we can we can we can give and receive love if, if, if we get if we get love as well. It, it, we could we could give and we can receive love as long as it meets our expectations. We can give and we can receive love as long as we it, 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 it could will stay within the confines of our mind. That's what we see love like. But did you know that when God says he loves you with an everlasting love, there is a connotation there of that love is that unconditional love, that agape love. From the time of eternity past, before you and I even existed, before you and I were even a thought in our, in our, in our, families, in our families' family planning, and as a matter of fact, even before they were, were a thought in their families' planning, amen, God had loved us with an unconditional, everlasting love. He already knew the plans that, that he had for us. He already knew how he was going to set his love upon us. And it says there, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. He's already had that plan for us to show us his love. And, you know, I can talk about this all I want to. And I can talk about the love of God until I am blue in the face. I actually tried it once. And I can never exhaust the love of God to explain to you how much God loves us. And it looks good on, on Christmas cards, and it looks good on birthday cards, and it looks good on social media posts about the love of God. But what does that look like? What is that? How, how do we know that the, God loves us? Are, we gonna just, are you just going to take my word for it? I want to share with you another passage of Scripture that shows you God's love in action. Amen? God's love in action. And it's a few verses. It's quite long. So if you're listening to me, to, to this thing now, I want you to write this verse down. It's found in Hosea chapter 11, beginning, beginning with verses 1 through 8. Hosea 11, 1 through 8. Listen to me now, but write this down, and maybe you can get into it a little bit later. When, you, when, when I say that I munched a little bit, I meditated a little bit on the love of God, this is the verse I went to. And it says here, beginning with verse 1, When Israel was a, was a youth, I loved him. And out of Egypt, out of bondage, I have called my son. The more they called them, the more they went from them. They kept sacrificing to the bales and burning incense to idols. Yet it is I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them in my arms, but they did not know that I had healed them. I led them with cords of a man and bonds of love, and I became to them as one who lifts the yoke from their jaws, and I bent down and fed them. They will not return to the land of Egypt, but Assyria, he will be their king because they refuse to return to me. The, soul, the sword will whirl against their cities and will demolish their gate bars and consume them because of their counsels. So my people are bent on turning from me. Though they call them to the one on high, none of them at all exalts him. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I surrender you, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? And how can I treat you like Zebulun? My heart is turned with, over within me, and my compassions are kindled. God is saying, you know what? It is I who loved you from your wound. It is I who who brought you out. It is I who who brought you who 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 pulled you with bonds of love, even though you turned from me, even though you 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 were disobedient to me, even though you worshipped other gods. I have loved you, even though you you acknowledged me. You didn't acknowledge me as king or as God, and you still were stiff necked. You were still sinful. You are still rebellious, and I should hand you over, is what God said. I should hand you over like I did the, the other nations, but I couldn't. 
I love that. He says, how can I give you up, O Ephraim? The Bi other versions of the Bible says, how can I let you go, O Israel? I love you too much. I can't do it. He said, he says, even though you turn from me, I can't do it. You know, read this on your own time. It, it, is, it is descriptive of an intimate courtship and relationship. Have you maybe as uh, may, maybe as men have you ever pursued somebody relentlessly a woman relentlessly maybe some of you women like doing that too pursuing a man that in that same passion amen but but have you ever pursued somebody someone so re relentlessly a relentless determination that's how God pursues us amen there, you, you see here there's a courtship and a chase and then the final catch. You, you see a, a, a rebellion, a, a, even a betrayal. But there's also that betrayal has redemption and a reunion. You know, it is a love that accepts even though we are unacceptable in society. It is a love that changes. Even when all the change we tried to, to do in our own lives, we couldn't change ourselves. It's a love that empowers us even though our own strength fails. Oh, that is God's, the love of God. It'll ch He will chase you down until you stop running. It, it, it is a love that will, that will enrapture you and that will capture your heart if you will allow him to. I don't know about you, but there's so many times of gratitude in my life that I thank God because there are times that when I ran, there were times when I rebelled, there were times when, when I wanted to do things my own way, and, I, and all I could do today is say, Lord, thank you for chasing me down. Thank you for not giving up on me, Lord. Thank you for, for, to, for, for going after me, even though I didn't want you to. Oh, that is the love of God today. It's not just a feeling. It's not just an emotion. But it is an, a relentless action that he will pursue you and pursue you and pursue you. Because he's got so many great things planned for you. And because he loves you. Oh, I, 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 I would challenge you, the church, the body of Christ, to, 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 to meditate upon the love of God today. And see if that will, that will uh, bring forth an attitude of gratitude. I, I, I would endeavor you, and I would endeavor to say, and I would challenge you, that, that if, you, if that does not develop an attitude of gratitude in you, then you have not meditated on the love of God enough. And I know that we can spend all this life and all of eternity trying to do that. But just do that until you, 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 could, you could have and cultivate that attitude of gratitude. Secondly, I want to share with you, not only am I thankful for the love of God, but I'm, I am thankful for the life of God. For the life of God in which he has given me not just a life that he had planned but his very own life that he he implants in us look at this colossians 1 ver, verse 27 to whom god to whom god willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory you want to have a glorious life you want to have a life that 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 uh uh, that is purposeful and impactful and known and have a good reputation, ha it, it, let the life of Christ be implanted in you and let it take over. You know, the Bible talks about that. When we, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, upon that conversion, upon the time that we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes and takes residence upon us. The very Spirit of God that displays the wisdom of God, the glory of God, and the power of God lives inside you and me. Amen. And what happens is that there is a life that now lives in us that wants to come busting out inside of us and, and starts to be, wants to be put on display. It's a, it's, a, it's a life of meaning. It's a life of significance and it's a life of purpose. If your life today is a little bit blah and you're just going through the motions, if your life is just like, man, what's my legacy going to be like? We all want to live a legacy. As a matter of fact, the older you get, you, you, you want to make sure you're living a life that will pass on to the generations after you. Amen. If you want that, 
And if you want to have that, let Christ reign in you. Let it be Christ that reigns in you because he is the hope of glory. He is the hope uh, of significance. He is the hope of meaning. He is the hope of your life being purposeful. He is the hope uh, of your life having a legacy. Look at this, John 10.10, 10, and I say this a lot. Uh, Jesus says, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Look out! Look about how how uh, Jesus took the the lives of twelve fishermen, who who stinky, right? Old fishermen, people who they they looked down on. They they didn't have a lot of finances. They weren't prominent men. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that they were they were uneducated and unsophisticated. But yet God used these twelve men to turn the whole world upside down. Look, look at what life was given to, to, to the Apostle John, John the Revelator. You know, they tried to kill him. They tried to, 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 to be, I don't know if it was beheaded. They tried, they tried to do a lot of things to him, to, to, to persecute him, to take his life away. But he wouldn't even die. He wouldn't even die. So finally they said, you know what, we're going to go exile you to the island of Patmos. And finally there, he received the final revelation of what's to come in, in the book of Revelations. You know, he, his life so much was, was so ingrained in him that he couldn't even die until he fulfilled his last purpose. You know, that's the kind of life that you and I have. As a matter of fact, I go out to tell people, this is what I truly believe. Until you, if you are in Christ, until you fulfill that, that purpose that God has for you, you might as well consider yourself immortal. I'm not going to tell you to go out and throw yourself in front of a truck or a bus or light yourself on fire to test that motive. Don't be stupid or foolish. But until in humility that, that, that if you submit yourself to Christ, until that, that, that life, that, that, that legacy is fulfilled, God will sustain you and he will keep you and he will remain, you will remain and to, until he that purpose is in you is fulfilled. I hope you can understand that. That's the richness of the life that he gives for you and I. Amen. And the last thing that I'm grateful for is the hope I have in God. The hope I have in God. Uh, Psalm 27 verse 13. I would have despaired unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So many of us, even as Christians, are like, oh, if it doesn't happen here, well, I know I'll see it on the other side, which is true, right? Right? But we need to see the goodness of God in this world, amen, that he might use us, that, that he might bless us, that, that, that he would show himself off in us and through us in this world, that more people would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is my hope. That word hope means to, to jump with an expectation, right? To, 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 to leap knowing that God has something good in store for you. That's the hope, right? That's the hope that we have in God. This is not a cliche, you know? This is not something that is, that is uh, put out there just, just to make you feel good. But, but understand that, that not only... that, that that we can have hope because not only is God good, but he does good. Amen. I, I saw a post today and I think I copied it on my social media. Don't just believe in what God can do for you, but believe that he is good and believe in his character. Amen. When you can believe in that, then you will have hope. And when you have hope, then your faith increases because Faith and hope go hand in hand. You want to live a life that, that has an adventurous faith? Then you could believe in the character of God and the goodness of God. And that way you can have hope. Maybe today you're praying and you're hoping for, for a physical or emotional healing. Maybe today you're hoping and you're praying for a financial breakthrough. Maybe today you're hoping and you're praying for for a relational reconciliation. I want to tell you today that in Christ, nothing is impossible. Nothing will be impossible for you. And there, there, 
The, the Bible says here in Psalm 84, verse 11, no good thing does he withhold from you when you walk uprightly. Meaning that when you walk according to God's word, when you walk according to, to what he has uh, for you, he will not withhold any good thing. When you know that and you put your trust in that, then you have a hope. You have a hope that, that no matter how long things might take, no matter how long things look, you know, what things look like, there's a hope in you that propels you to live a life in which God has for you. Next week, I want to show you how does that work? How is that implemented? What are the, where are the batteries in all of this? I want to share that with you. I want to challenge you today. This Thanksgiving, take some time, maybe to the side, take some time to think about what you're thankful for. You're, you're, you're breathing, you're above ground, you're on this side of the dirt, amen? You have every reason to be thankful. Take, take, I bet you anything, there's at least three things that you can think of to be thankful for. I gave you three things, right? The love of God, the life of God, and the hope in which he gives us. There's three things right there. There's three things. I don't care. I don't care what's going on in your life right now. You got some things that you can be grateful for. And let that attitude of gratitude propel you to the next stage in life in life you know for these things in which i've shared for i shared i've shared things about i had uh like i said when paul is when paul was giving these scriptures about thanksgiving to rejoice in the lord for this is the will of god in christ jesus he's talking to believers he's talking to believers now i know that there's some of you that are listening and i i believe that that right now there's many of you right now that are listening and and you're not even sure what what propelled what to 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 log in and to listen to this message maybe you're listening to it now on facebook live uh maybe you're listening it on on the youtube channel or on the website you just happen to be stumbling through this message and, and you rebelled and you're like oh i've heard these preachers say that before i'm not doing it let me plead with you today. God loves you so much that he took this old preacher. And, and even though I doubt sometimes whether or not I should do this, even though I doubt sometimes whether or not who is listening, if there's anybody listening, there's, he leaves a desire in my heart to preach this message just so that you can hear it. Just so that you would have an opportunity to, 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 to listen to this message. A message from him, not from me. A message from him to say that he loves you, he has a life for you, and that if you just put your hope and your trust in him, that he has a great a great eternity waiting for you, but he also has a great purpose for you as well, that you might have an attitude of gratitude. I know every, there's many of us that go through this time of the year and we say, oh man, I'm at the same place where I was last year. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. You are not in the same place you were last year. Your, your situation and your circumstance may look like it, but you are not. You've grown, you've matured, and God is doing something in your life to set you up for your, the next stage in life. I promise you that from the authority of his word that that is true. But the greatest thing you can ever do today is surrender your life to him, to Jesus Christ. And for that, you will forever be grateful for. I, I say this all the time, that when I recommitted my life to Jesus Christ, it's been over 20 years now, and there's never been a day that I've said that I've said that I, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, God steered me wrong. He's never have. And I said that. I could have committed my life in a dark, cold prison cell in Delano, California. And, and I've never regretted giving my life back to Jesus. 
today, if that is you. I want to I wanna share and give you an opportunity. I want to plead with you that, that the first thing that you, you must do to, to cultivate an attitude of gratitude is give your life to Jesus. If for that, you will always be thankful for. And there will be a time coming where you will know, I'm sure glad I surrendered my life to Jesus. If that is you today, will you pray with me? If you never ask God to forgive you of your sins, if you've never accepted his only son as, a, uh, as your Lord and your Savior, to put your faith in the finished work of the cross, then maybe today is that day. Would you allow me to lead you in a very short prayer? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've broken all your laws. And I am sorry. Please forgive me. Please save me. As today, I put my faith and trust in the work you did on the cross. I believe you came into this world and you died on the cross for my sins where you suffered, died, and, and you were buried. And three days later, you rose again from the dead. And because now, because you live, I can live also. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit that I can live the rest of this life for you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's two things I want you to know. That if you prayed that prayer with me, first of all, that God had written, has written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Meaning you have reservations in heaven today. Amen. Forget about your reservations on the airlines or, or in the hotels. I know a lot of you are traveling this Thanksgiving. You know, those are important, I know. But the, the greatest reservation you have today is Him writing your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have reservations in heaven. The second thing I want you to know is that you will have questions. And it's okay for you to have questions. If that is you, I, I want you to do me a favor because you will always have questions. Uh, will you connect with me by by uh, making a comment underneath this video uh, here on Facebook and say, Pastor Daniel, that was me. I prayed that prayer with you. I surrendered my life to Jesus. If that is you today, uh, just go ahead and, 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 and put that on the comment section. You could, you could uh, send me a message on Facebook Messenger. Or if you're listening to this on, um, on YouTube or on the website, you could always email me at promiselosangeles at gmail.com. Promiselosangeles at gmail.com. And uh, if you will do that, I want to get some material into your hands. I want to get a Bible to you. And I want you to use me as your resource and say, Pastor Daniel, I have some questions. And I will do everything I can to get you some answers. Uh, and you will have questions. We all do. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And so if you will do that, and um, if, you will, um, if, if you will indeed go ahead and, and, and send whatever information you can to me, I promise to be a resource to you. I promise to, to, to return your calls and, and, to, and to help you in your walk with, with God. Amen. Um, this week. Because of the Thanksgiving holiday, we will be having our Thursday night prayer meeting on Wednesday night. And um, so if you have any prayers or you'd like to join us for our online prayer meeting, uh, please look out for, um, uh, for announcements on, on this Facebook page. Uh, if you are listening to this on YouTube or off the website, go to Facebook and, and like Promise LA, uh, the Promise LA page. It is. A lot of people call it the purple page. That's okay. Um, go back and uh, like that and you'll see some announcements of how you can join us on Wednesday night for Thursday night prayer meeting. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but we only do that for once a year. Amen. And if you will join us, we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to pray for you. Uh, and it would be awesome to, 
to, to give God some thanks for all that he's done for us. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, I look forward to meeting a lot of you in person soon. And uh, um, I, I pray that you would have a great Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this message and, uh, and you're in need for, for some things over this Thanksgiving holiday, please get back over to me and we'll use whatever resource we have to make sure that uh, um, you're a part of a Thanksgiving uh, or at least have a meal. Uh, get something over to you that way, okay? God bless you guys. Thank you. God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.